Hey guys, Mr. Bowman here. I'm on Desmos again, and I've got the paint going to help us with our formulas. But what we're doing today is we are carrying on with our parabolas, and we are learning to identify the formula of a given parabola, except we're going to be using the factorized method. And we, we use this method when we don't have accurate information on the, the vertex. So no info on the vertex. And what we need, instead of the information on the vertex, we can also figure out if we can see the x-intercepts, we will also be able to figure out the equation of that parabola. And I'm just going to note down what the formula is. So y is going to be equal to a times x plus b times x plus c. And hopefully you can see why it's called the factorized method. It's because we've got a double bracket factorization to help us with that. So just to recap, so let's put in a, um, a random example. So we've got y equals, this is the ones we looked at in the previous video, y equals x squared plus 4. And we can clearly see the vertex here. So without doubt, we can see how much it's been moved up or down, how much it's been moved left or right. But that's not always going to be the case. So let's have a look at another formula. So x plus 2. Ooh. So x plus 2, and then maybe x minus 3. So we've got a new graph. It's, we can see it's definitely a parabola. But let's have a look at the vertex down here. It's not really a nice number. It's a bit weird, and it doesn't really help us out. So we don't really have access to that information. But what we can clearly see are the x-intercepts. So when we don't have the nice number for a vertex or the information for a vertex, we can rely on the x-intercepts to help us with that equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete our vertex equation. And let's have a look at our steps. So I'm just going to change the steps here. So let's get rid of the minor grid lines and let's add steps of 1. And let's try to link what we've done in our formula. So we've got intercepts of negative 2 and net positive 3. And hopefully you can notice that these are actually the opposite values of the ones in our brackets. So that positive 2, that becomes the negative 2 intercept. And that negative 3, that becomes the positive 3 intercepts. And what we can do is we can just prove that if I change this 2 to a 4, that should go to negative 4. There we go, it's done that, and it's made our parabola a lot wider. And if I change that 3 to a 1, that should go to positive 1. And it's done that change. So what the b and the c values are, so they are the opposite values of the x-intercepts. So for example, negative 2, well, that will become plus 2. Plus 3, that will become minus 3. So hopefully you've got that idea of they are opposites. Um, and what we can do is like regular parabolas, we can make it skinnier and wider as well. So if I add in the a, so the a is the coefficient. And just like the other method, that affects the width of our parabola. And we have to mathematically solve to get that point. Um, but let's try it around. So let's try to make it skinnier. So I want to make it skinnier. I'm probably going to put in a 2. There you go. We can see that's a lot skinnier. Put in 10. Really skinny now. We can also make that a bit fatter. Let's put in, I don't know, 0.5. So we've made that a half, 0.5. And then like I did by accident, we can also turn it upside down by making it negative. So the same rules to parabolas apply. So hopefully you found this short explanation on Desmos about the x-intercept method useful. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to pause the video. We're going to go back to PowerPoint, and we're going to go through two or three graphs and help you identify the formula of the given graphs. Okay, if you haven't, please pause the video. Make sure you get those notes and learning objectives down, and then we'll get into some examples. Okay, guys, we're back and we are on our PowerPoint now. And what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to write down our formula again. So y is going to be equal to a. That relates to the width. 
x plus b in our first bracket and then x plus c. Just to recap, the b and c, they are the opposite values to the x-intercepts. And A, we have to go ahead and calculate that. So we're going to get into the question. So let's have a look at that blue graph, guys. Graph number one, just over there. Um, graph number one, let's start off with our generic equation, as we always should. X plus B, X plus C. First step, let's find our B and C values. So that 3 or negative 3, that means one value is going to be positive 3. And, well, the opposite to positive 0 is negative 0. So that's going to be 0. So 1 will be 0 and 1 will be 3. So x plus 0, x plus 3. What I am going to do is x plus 0, well, that just comes to x. So I'm going to simplify that. So that's going to become a times x times x plus 3. So I've actually lost the bracket completely there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look or hunt for another point on our graph just to give us a bit more information. And we've got it down the bottom. So we've been told our graph is at negative 2, negative 2. So that means our x value will be negative 2 and our y value will be negative 2. So what we can do is we can put both of those values into our equation, leaving us with a to solve. So let's write that down. So negative 2 is going to be equal to a times negative 2 times negative 2 plus 3. So let's simplify and do that math. So this part here is going to become positive 1, so we can ignore that. And that's going to leave negative 2a. We're then going to go negative 2a divided by negative 2, so we're moving that to the other side. And that is going to become 1. And what that actually means is there's no number in front of the brackets. And our final equation is going to be x, x plus 3. So we should have a 1 there, but mathematicians, we're lazy, we're going to make that invisible. So hopefully you got that example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to clear our working. If you need to, make sure you get that down. Okay, guys, we're back. We're now going to look at the green graph. So that one over there. And that's our second equation. And first step, as always, let's write down our formula. So I write down the formula every single time. Um, we can figure out the B and the C values really easily just by looking at it. So there is negative 2, which means the opposite would be positive 2. Here is 5, and the opposite of that would be minus 5. So we've got our B and our C values. And just to emphasize, it doesn't matter which way around they are. Um, they you still get the correct answer. So A is going to be equal to X plus 2x minus 5. Okay, so we've got our starting point. We now need to hunt for an x and a y value to put in so we can solve A. So let's pull our graph. I did put one in down there. Down the bottom, 1 comma negative 3, and that means x is going to be 1 and y is going to be negative 3. So let's put both of those into our equation. So negative 3 is going to be equal. Well that, sorry, that's a funny 3. So Negative 3 is going to be equal to a times 1 plus 2 times 1 minus 5. So I've substituted both of those values in. We can now sort those brackets out. Negative 3, so it's going to be a times 3 times negative 4. And negative 3 is going to become negative 12a. We're then going to take that negative 12 to the other side as a division. So a is going to be equal to negative 3 divided by negative 12. And if we simplify that fraction and use our integer skills, we're going to get to 1 quarter. So that means we do have a value in front of our brackets. And that 1 quarter makes sense because that green graph is a lot wider than the other graphs. Therefore, that graph is going to be equal to y is equal to 1 quarter of x plus 2 and x minus 5. There you go. So we've done two out of three of our graphs. So I'm going to pause the video again. If you haven't got that example down, make sure you do. And then we're going to get into our last and our hardest graph, that purple one. And our last graph, that purple one, graph number three, we're going to be starting off the same way. We're going to be writing down the formula 
to help us. So first step, doesn't change. Just because it's upside down doesn't mean our mind should go crazy and we should be like, oh, what's this? It's a parabola, it's the same process. The only thing that will be different is when we calculate A, we are expecting a negative number because it is upside down. So let's have a look at the x-intercepts. We got one at two, and the opposite of two is negative two, and we have one at seven. The opposite of seven is negative seven. So those are gonna be our B and our C values. So let's get that down. So Y is gonna be equal to A, X minus two, X minus seven. We now need to find an X and a Y value to put into the equation to solve for A, and we've been given a point on the graph, three comma eight, and at that point, X is equal to three and Y is equal to eight. And we figure that out by following the coordinate. So let's put both of those into our equation. So 8, because that's y, is going to be equal to a of 3 minus 2 of 3 minus 7. We're then going to finish up with those brackets. So 3 minus 2, well, that's going to be 1. And 3 minus 7, well, that's going to be negative 4. So that's going to become 8 is equal to negative 4a. We're then going to move the negative 4 to the other side. So that means 8 divided by negative 4 is going to be equal to a. And that's going to give us negative 2. And just like we thought, we got a negative answer because our parabola is upside down. After that, we can then finish up with our final formula. Therefore, y is going to be equal to negative 2 of x minus 2, x minus 7. Just like that, we've learned yesterday's method, the vertex method, and today's method, the factorized method. Hopefully you found the video useful. Now let's get into heaps of questions.